Hey everyone, this is Greg with Science Studio. So a lot of you are probably familiar with my own personal rig. I've uploaded a few videos to YouTube already detailing the parts that kind of comprise the thing. You probably know that it's powered by the modest Intel Skylake i3-6100, overclocked to 4.2 GHz. I'm also sporting a Gigabyte WinForce R9380 4GB graphics card and two sticks of DDR4 clocked at 2666MHz. If you are wondering how we managed to overclock my locked Core i3, check out the link in the video description. Now don't get me wrong, I love everything about this system, its speed, its reliability, its functionality, and perhaps most importantly, its price. But there was something just eating at me, and it's probably obvious to you at this point what that thing is. The insanely clashing color scheme. I wanted to fix that, so I decided to disassemble my entire PC and paint it using white Plasti Dip. Yeah. Are you ready? Alright, let's get down to business. I began, of course, by removing the front and back panels of my NZXT S340 computer case. All of the cables wired directly into the motherboard and graphics card were removed, including the 8-pin GPU power connector, 8-pin CPU power connector, which proved to be a bit tricky given the Hyper T4 extended reach problem, and the 24-pin motherboard power connector. SATA cables, fan cables, and the USB 3.0 hub cable were also obviously disconnected. We removed the graphics card next, notably before disconnecting all the tiny case cables down below. We lifted the lever on the PCI port and pulled the graphics card out. Now with a quick inspection, I concluded that I would probably paint both the front and back plates of the card. The fans however would remain unpainted, simply for the sake of stability. Also I'm not sure how it's going to look being completely white. I made sure to remove my additional PCI components, including my Wi-Fi adapter and NZXT LED card. The SSD was next. Maybe I'll paint this? I unscrewed the EVGA power supply from the tower in the following step. The four screws held the PSU frame to the back of the case. Be very gentle when sliding all the cables out of your case. I pulled down the NZXT LED light string from the inside of the case, this is what gave my case the blue glow, and then I moved on to the rear mounted exhaust fan. Four screws of course, and then slide it right out. On a side note, I sincerely hope that all of you enjoy the game of Boggle. No, Boggle is not our sponsor. Be sure that your motherboard is completely disconnected from any foreign objects before turning your computer on its side. We located the 5 or so screws holding it in place and used a magnetic Phillips head screwdriver to unmount the board itself. Look how handy that is. I would have lost that screw a while back. I carefully removed the MOBO, that just sounds weird, MOBO, I just, ugh, I don't, I don't like that, using the T4 as a handle of sorts and placed it on a textbook of all things. Okay, so from this point on, you'll need to put on your big boy pants and your big girl pants. Things are about to get dicey. If at any point you get uncomfortable assuming you're following along with us, please make a U-turn and save yourself the stress and potential hardware damage. This is risky business. Hmm, I think I'll just paint this part. Yeah, the 24 pin connector, that'll do. Okay, so turn your motherboard on its side and locate the screws holding your VRM heat sinks in place. Some motherboards have the screws entering from the top versus the bottom. Now in case you're wondering, VRM stands for Voltage Regulator Modules. The sockets under these heat sinks convert your PSU's input voltages, typically 5 volts and 12 volts, into much lower streams of voltage to power your processor. You should remove the heat sink over your chipset as well. Now if you haven't already, remove your RAM cards. We planned to paint ours, though we had no idea what was in store for us with these two. Our pan RAM dims looked like they'd be mighty difficult to disassemble. And they were. It took me literally an hour to figure out how these things open. There were no screws, and there were no levers or handles or anything of that sort. Apparently the two heat shields over the memory modules themselves were glued to the spreader. So finally, once I realized that this would take some careful precise force to pop things open, I downgraded to a flathead screwdriver size and pried them open. Basically, I mean that's what I had to do, just pry them open. 
The experience was a bit like shucking an oyster, if you've ever done that. It's kind of the only analogy I can think of at this point. Once inside, the beautiful memory modules were revealed. Now the second half of the heat spreader, <laughs> the other half of it that was kind of stuck to the circuit itself, simply refused to budge. When I finally decided that the costs outweighed the benefits on this one, I concluded that I would just have to place painter's tape over the circuits themselves to prepare for the painting process. So that's exactly what I did. Don't press too firmly when performing this step, uh, you really don't want to snag on resistors when removing this tape later on, which you will have to do. I decided to paint the SSD as well, just for kicks, I really didn't know how it would turn out, so I taped off the important parts for good measure. Now as for the SSD tray, this thing would be super easy to paint, no tape required. Okay now, on to the graphics card. I knew from the start that this thing would prove the most difficult, and yes, I mean even more so than the RAM. These screws had to come off first, at least <laughs> that's what I thought. When all of them were removed, I found that there were other screws holding the back plate in from the opposite side. It would have to come off later. So I turned the card front side up and began unscrewing the fan brackets from the heatsink below. And yes, the screws were located inside the fan inlets themselves. And yes, I needed a smaller screwdriver. And yes, I had to unscrew the screws at an angle. Meh. There were screws on the sides and front of the card as well. Some were very tricky to get at. One was behind a heat pipe. Like, I have no idea how they expected anyone to unscrew that, let alone screw that in in the first place. The Windforce card had three plugs that needed to be removed, two smaller plugs for the LED front panel, and then one large plug for the dual fan array. The PCB itself was elaborate and impressive of course, but the pre-applied thermal paste was not. It was sticky and just poorly applied, it was kind of just splashed all over the GPU. Cheap really. But no surprise there, a lot of companies tend to budget on this sort of thing. So we'll fix that in a later step. Disconnect the heat sink from the top of the card and take a picture of what's left. You'll need this during the rewiring phases of the reassembling process. Apparently this card only assembles if the fan and LED cables are arranged a specific way. We pulled out the Windforce LED panel and realized that all we had remaining was an intricate piece of plastic. Literally, it was just plastic. So we could basically paint this entire thing. We paused for a second at this point and realized just how far we'd come. Pretty much everything that we wanted was ready to be painted. So after masking off a few important parts on each component, we brought them all outside. Our graphics card front and back plates were ready to go. Our VRM and chipset heat sinks were ready to go. Our RAM was ready to go. Our SSD was also ready to go. And our Hyper T4 fan bracket, which I didn't show being disassembled because it was literally just four screws, was also in the game. Oh, and don't forget our SSD mounting tray. We also tried to paint some SATA cables just for kicks, but I, I, I really regretted that. I prepared a canvas of sorts using old Newegg cardboard boxes, although the cardboard boxes you use don't have to be from Newegg. Uh, prepared our Plasti Dip by shaking the can vigorously for a minute or so, yes we follow directions, and then uh, brought over our components, began applying gentle yet thorough coats, I know that's really confusing, uh, it was for us too. I'm no expert at this, so please don't completely trash me in the comments below. I will appreciate it. <laughs> the instructions on the can said to spray from around 6 to 10 inches away from the target, but I found that this tactic led to overspray in some cases. So if you are a plasti dipping pro, maybe you figured out how to master the art by now, and maybe you can step into the studio and show the rest of us how it's done. Like, for real though, if you are a plastic dipping pro, you're welcome to be featured in a future video. Just kind of, you know, hit us up.
Okay, so it looks like this coat is good and finished. It's not super thick yet, um, but I do expect that as we continue to add coats to this, it'll thicken and uh, kind of look a little matty, maybe even glossy. I'm not sure how this will look on the materials that we're painting on, but uh, that's what this is all about, just figuring this out. So uh, I'm gonna swap these out for the other parts that we haven't painted yet, and then uh, we'll let them dry. Should get a good little circuit going. Uh, shouldn't have to wait too long between sets, so let's go ahead and do that. After three or so coats, the vibrancy of the white Plasti Dip started to show. I was very impressed with the looks this early into the painting process. Well, okay, <laughs> impressed with it all minus the SATA cables, obviously. We just had a few more coats to go. Once the paint dried on our first set of goodies, I decided to test drive one of the components. I replaced the second black SSD tray, which I hadn't painted yet, with our newly painted white one, and was very satisfied with the new dynamic that was beginning to unfold. Once the paint dried on the rest of our goodies, I brought them back inside and braced myself for the reassembling phase of the project. Since I knew the graphics card would prove the most difficult, I decided to tackle it first, at least partially. At this point, however, it obviously doesn't matter what you choose to start with. The WinForce logo popped into place, the fans and their cables were routed successfully, and then were screwed back onto their respective brackets. I double checked that each fan spun unhindered, just to be sure. With both fans in place, I was already feeling the jitters. This thing was already looking pretty sweet, I have to say. I was actually glad that I decided not to paint the fans. The contrast, it yeah, works for me. Moving on, we reinstalled the VRM and chipset heat sinks, but in order to hold them into place, they were quite stubborn, I had to get a bit creative for parts of this step. I basically had to let the board lean partially over a table and lay underneath it to screw the VRM heat sinks particularly. <laughs> it felt a bit like working on a car from, you know, below. Oh, and our pup kept getting in the way. <laughs> Once the board was reassembled, I gave it a few turns to, you know, verify that the board did in fact look pretty sweet, and it did. Next I peeled the painter's tape off of the ram sticks, being especially careful over the circuits themselves. They actually turned out better than I expected. The paint was actually glossy looking in the places with rough textures, which I didn't expect at all, and all in all, looked almost like that was how they were purchased in the first place, which was obviously the goal here. The two halves of each card connected very simply, much simpler than they disconnected. I made sure to apply force over the two plates once they were together again, all to ensure that the sticks would in fact stay together once they were in the board. In all seriousness though, I could not believe how great these sticks turned out. I was very proud of myself at this point. We merged our motherboard with our tower, I love that word merged, 
uh, after reinserting our RAM, and then realized that our color conversion was starting to finally take shape as a whole. That was my watch. Things actually matched. After realizing that I had mentally given up on the graphics card reassembly stage, I just kind of transitioned from that for some reason, I jumped back onto it, I remounted the back plate to the PCB of the card itself, and then secured it with the original screws. Now after using 90 whatever percent isopropyl alcohol to clean the original thermal paste from the GPU and heat spreader, I applied some of our leftover arctic silver 5 whatever thermal compound to the chip, dabbing slightly more than the typical amount for a CPU. Make sure that at this point the alignment between your heat spreader and the circuit board is very near perfect. Don't allow your thermal glue to come into contact with other components. It's unlikely that anything would come to harm, but you never know. Now once the heat sink was aligned, I quickly secured it from the back of the card through the back plate. I'm talking about the four screws mounted in the square pattern. It would be better if you had someone else hold the heatsink in place while performing this step. I found that my heatsink was slippery a bit and kind of slid around over the GPU as I tried to hold it steady. We brought over the front plate, is that what you call it, the front plate? I, I don't even know, whatever, it's the front plate, <laughs> and reinstalled it in this step. Now be sure to plug in your cables before screwing the front plate onto the board itself. When the card was finally assembled to completion, we stopped to admire it for a few seconds. Back from that, reinsert your graphics card into your motherboard at this point, securing it to the frame as well. Now at this point, I like to wire all of my case components to the motherboard first. I do this particularly because it becomes difficult to weave those thin cables in between the massive ones of the power supply once it's inserted. So connect the hard drive LED, power LED, power button, HD audio, USB cables, etc, etc, into the board first. Now, grab a hold of your power supply and route its cables through your case as we did here. Yes, it is a pain, but every computer builder must go through this process. Unless you have a modular power supply, I guess that wouldn't be such a bad thing. Unless you're, you know, really tight on cash, which is understandable. We secured it to our tower using the included mounting bracket and the four screws. So, unfortunately, though, as expected, our SSD's paint job was a bit rustic, but the good thing is that Plasti Dip is removable. Yeah, you heard that correctly. As long as you spray the paint in thick enough coats, it'll basically peel right off. Okay, so back to reassembling. Once your power and SATA cables have been routed and plugged in appropriately, and preferably in the same ports that they were plugged into originally, eh, I'm gonna cover that part up. <laughs> no one wants to see that mess, right? Am I right? But hey, the rest of it looks alright. Give the computer one last tribute, and admire the work you've so devoutly invested into your newly decorated build. Pop on the front and back panels, plug in the important peripherals, and... Okay, so this is the moment of truth. Plugged everything in, we're about to turn it on. Hopefully it turns on. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Alright. Not bad. Not bad. Check it out! I am so pleased with these looks. I really wish all of you could see it in person. 
but don't worry, I'll show better footage of it in a sec. I recorded this with my phone because I was so eager to see it turn on and light up that I didn't actually bring my DSLR with me. The blue LEDs definitely bring the white in the case to life. I'm very glad I went with this color scheme. Okay, so after practically performing surgery on my PC, it works. <laughs> I was more worried about it working than anything else. But uh, nonetheless, it is working and it looks stunning, at least in my opinion. Now, this isn't perfect, and using Plasti Dip isn't going to give you a perfect solution, especially if you're looking for a glossy finish. But given the $4 that I paid for the paint, and the six or so hours that it took to paint everything with multiple coats, I'd say it looks pretty good for the amount of time and money invested. Now, if white's not your color, by all means, choose a, another color. Black, uh, they have red, green, some kind of like neon yellow. I mean, there are plenty of colors out there to choose, so if you decide to plastic dip any part of your computer, just, you know, choose something that, that goes along with the rest of your build, and preferably with your case as well. So in my case, well, literally, uh, you could see that I had some color disarray in there. I had copper-orange colors mixed with red colors, mixed with black and white and blue. It was just, uh, it was just kind of a mess. So what I decided to do was paint over everything that had any color other than white or black for the most part. I mean, there are some things that you really can't change. So all of the VRM heat sinks are white. The heat sink over the Z170 chipset is white. Pretty much the entire graphics card for the most part is white. And the case is white, that's cool. I also kind of did a terrible job on painting my 24 pin power connector. Uh, you might want to find a different kind of paint to use for that. Mine looks a bit chalky, but uh, I'm not going to be moving it or unplugging it too often. So it's, it's, uh, it's like a two foot mod, maybe a one foot mod in some cases. It's, it's definitely not a 10 foot mod. From, from where I'm sitting, you really can't see uh, that there's any kind of painting malpractice going on in there. So if you're looking to show off your PC to your friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, etc., they're not going to be too picky about the details. They're going to look at it from, well, pretty much how far away I am from it right now, and they're going to say, wow, that is an awesome paint job. Hopefully they say that. I mean, if you do anywhere near as okay of a job as I did, you're, you're in the clear. So uh, I'm not saying that you have to paint your computer parts, obviously, and please do these things carefully. All this is at your own risk. Keep that in mind. Everything that you decide to do to your computer is at your own risk. And once you paint these things and take off the stickers and whatnot, most of your warranties are void. I did notice that on the RAM in particular, I pulled off the sticker and it left a, a void pattern, like engraved into the metal. And I, <laughs> that was a pain to get rid of. But uh, yeah, there aren't any stickers left on my RAM sticks and that's gonna be a problem if I ever want to return them. But of course, that was something I considered before I decided to paint this entire system. So keep that in mind with every part, not just your RAM, but with every part of your system that you plan on painting. It's very likely you won't be able to return anything that you paint over. So with that in mind, I'll go ahead and show you a few last minute clips of the system. And then I guess you can decide for yourself if uh, you want to spend the time and little bit of money to paint your system and make it your own. So that's about it everyone. I appreciate the interest. Thanks for watching this far into the video. Leave a like if you thought the video was cool. Leave a dis dislike if you thought the video was crap and you're certainly entitled to feel that way. If you would like to leave a comment, please do so. I try to answer as many of them as I can. And uh, as always, be sure to subscribe for more. And I guess I'll just kind of conclude the video with a few more clips of the PC that I painted. So, uh, yeah, this is Science Studio. Thanks for learning. Here.